Hey guys, welcome back to Trek Yards. I'm Captain Foley. I'm Connor Cocking Zan Stewart. Are we yes. here again on another one of these videos? You know, another guest. Oh. It's fine though. We love adding to the Trek Yards family. Uh, we have a lot of special guests for you guys, as you guys know, but we have another one lined up today. So, who are we talking to today, Samuel? Well, a bit more unique, isn't it, today, Stuart? I would say so, yeah, absolutely. We are introducing a video game creator, content, and Trek fan. Introducing Josh Singer. Creator and lead game designer of Star Trek Adversaries. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hey, Josh. Welcome to the show. Glad to have you here. Thanks for having me. My first question is, so in one sentence, can you tell us what Star Trek Adversaries actually is? In one sentence, Star Trek Adversaries is a 3D collectible card game set in the Star Trek universe in the vein of games like Hearthstone, Magic the Gathering, and the classic Decipher Star Trek game that I played as a child. Excellent. And I gotta say, as a ship guy, this game is fantastic. There's a lot of great models and stuff. And we're sure we're gonna talk about that down the road. But I've, I'm not a big fan of card games in general, but I really have enjoyed this very much, so. Oh, great. It's yeah. one of those things I actually saw the uh, sort of an ad for it, a vague like, oh, it's a new thing. And then you guys contacted us and we had a discussion. And as soon as I clicked on the game, I was like, they like their ships. Yeah. <laughs> they like their ships. Oh, very God. true. Very true. And I, I, I quite enjoyed the game. I should do a full thing. But um, for the audience, what is your hope for this game? Why, beyond being fun, what is it, what is it, what's it here to add to the, the Trek environment, do you think? Well, I think Trek has always been a franchise that lends itself well to strategy and strategy games. And I think that that's one of the places that uh, the Star Trek fans really have been lacking uh, for content for a while. And this game is really designed to be a strategy rich, uh, brain teasing game that really gets players involved while at the same time really engrossing them in the intellectual property, in the characters, in the ships, in the sounds. Uh, we're really trying to make this an authentic Star Trek experience for the fans. And it's worth saying that you could have done that easily without all the cool 3D, but you wanted <laughs> to do some proper visuals. Cause I mean, that's one mm -hmm. thing I saw first time I loaded up the first battle. I'm like, oh, that's a quite a nice little light engine there. It's actually mm -hmm. like, it works well. They put some thought into this. Mm. Well, I mean, we, we really did stop and say, um, you know, if we were going to bring back the Decipher game from the 90s, if we were going to uh, mix that with the new modern CCG games, what would we want from it? Would we want another flat game where you tossed cards at each other? Or would we want something where you got to see your, your favorite ships engaging in combat? And once we threw the technology together, we realized there was nothing stopping us from doing that other than hard work. And we have no problem putting that in. So you didn't just want to make the Uno Star Trek edition? <laughs> no, no, not not really up our, um, our, you know, something we wanted to do. And I guess yeah. double down on that, I mean, obviously we're ships, this is a match made in heaven because you also have to focus mm. on ships, but the Trek universe, for people like us, that's a big thing, but for a lot of other people it's about the characters. So why go for ships as opposed to a, a people car game where you have 3D models of people and they're firing phases or, or doing whatever? Why, why the ship aspect? Um... Well, for ships, it was we felt like ship combat was something that we could do and really bring to life in a 3D engine and have it be something that could also be, eventually be on mobile, um, something that would be light enough to play on an older machine. If we had gone with full 3D characters as well, we would have put the the game out of range of a lot of players. And so we felt like, well, the the 2D crew, the, the paintings of the crew, we wanted to make sure they were beautiful and, and paid proper homage to the characters, but were lightweight enough as cards and remained 2D so that uh, the bulk of what you're drawing on screen could be the ships. All right, so uh, what would be one thing you'd say to get fans excited about Star Trek adversaries and ha have them really want to get in and play this game? Well, from a Star Trek perspective, I think this is going to be the most authentic experience that you can get in a game. Um, we're currently working with CBS to actually recreate their star charts from their stellar cartography book to construct the entire Star Trek universe so that you can actually go and explore. Um, once you get to these planets, of course, you do battle with enemies using the format of the card game. Um, but the exploration, um, 
really getting in all the authentic portions of Star Trek is, is, you know, kind of our goal. So if you're a huge Star Trek fan, this is going to be hopefully the most authentic experience that any game can provide. Um, and then outside of that, you know, we're trying to make a game that is, uh, inviting to all players who maybe haven't played a CCG yet um, and haven't really experienced how much fun the genre is. So we want to make sure that it's also inviting and has that crossover uh, appeal to players who love Star Trek, want to get into the genre, and feel that this is a, a, an approachable game to do it in. Cool. And I guess it's worth saying that, I mean, this this game is so fresh off the block in terms of being released to the public. You know, you went full on early alpha, which is very, as in public alpha, which is almost unheard of. Such a small percentage of games do that. And so the game that hopefully you guys are playing um, and, and see the passion in, in Josh want, want to play, that is the that is the bare bones. Um, and we've sort of kept asking these questions off camera to a minimum. So when you say these things, we can be excited because we want to know and i think fans want to know but if if you take one thing away from this guys go play the game and enjoy the basics and the ships but clearly there's going to be a lot more and i bet there's more but i could i wouldn't even want to ask you what you're really really planning because you, you want some surprises um but just mm -hmm. that sounds cool so yeah i mean it, we really are trying to make sure that this is a game that is fun now and then has tremendous growth potential in the future. Um, if you like what you're playing now, you're going to love what you're going to be playing in the future. And if you don't love what we have now, give us a chance again when we hit Steam in three weeks. And I think you'll find it'll be a vastly better experience even by then. Um, why we opened it up at this stage is because we felt like we had such a good initial product that we wanted to allow the Star Trek fans to find it organically before we really started pushing it, um, you know, into the public sphere. And so far, it's worked out great. We've got an incredibly loyal, uh, fantastic testing community who uh, have been playing and giving us feedback and gave, giving us notes and finding bugs. And it's been absolutely phenomenal. And we invite all our, our new players to join our Discord and come talk to us because the developers are in there all the time. We are interacting with people all the time. We're playing with, with people all the time, um, you know, like I, you know, keep reiterating, we are the players of this game as well as its creators. We we want it to be good as players as well. And so we invest the time to make sure that's the case. And one last question, just to kind of get people excited out there. You had mentioned mobile gaming. Uh, so what if somebody wants to get this on their phone or as an app for their iPad eventually? What's the time frame you guys have planned for that? So right now, our schedule is we are looking about three weeks out from our Steam launch, which will be our kind of larger PC and Mac release. Um, once that has been kind of in production and, and out there for, I would say, a good month, we'll be rolling out the first mobile um, kind of test kits out for people to play with. It won't be a large distribution in the beginning. We'll be rolling it out slowly uh, in waves. But we have internal tests or internal builds, I should say, that are working right now. Um, but for anything mobile, you really want to make sure that you're making it thumb friendly and making sure that everything on the screen has the right real estate to be legible. So while the game works great and we've tested it, I believe, um, I think we're getting over 30 frames a second on an iPhone 6. So it should work on phones all the way back to a 5, I believe, uh, iPhone 5 equivalent. Um, you know, we want to make sure that the experience is the intended mobile experience, not just kind of a port of the PC and Mac experience. Mm -hmm. Cool. So a ton of teasers cool. in this introduction. So welcome to the channel, Josh. <laughs> We're going to talk to you a lot more. Um, but we've got another episode of you coming soon to delve more into the background the history and whatnot. So Stuart, as the script says, give the final goodbye. <laughs> All right, guys, as you heard, go download Star Trek Adversaries, check it out, and uh, definitely look forward to the next interview we talk about way more in-depth on this game. So until then, guys, I'm Captain Foley. I'm Connor Cockings, and... And I'm Josh Singer. Goodbye. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. <laughs>